Hello guys, this is AM and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be learning about data structure, Bloom filters and also how to code in Go language. Bloom filter is very efficient and also very fast. All the applications of algorithms and data structure has some trade-offs. Even Bloom filter has the trade-offs of false positives. Uh, let me explain what are false positives in this case. Bloom filters are a probabilistic data structure. That means they can certainly say that whether an item is not present in the set or not, but they give a chance of falseness in whether saying whether the item is truly present in the set or not. In a simple terms, when I ask whether the item is present in the set or not, if the blue filter says it is present, it is not 100% sure that it is actually present. But before we go deep into the theory of bloom filters let us see where it is actually used one of the great example is google's chrome browser where they use bloom filter to store all the malicious urls and avoid going to that urls when the user is navigating to that particular address since chrome has to be constrained memory bloom filters is therefore go to data structure to store millions of millions of urls is a small space. In the same way, a medium blog, major blog, blogging site also uses this a bloom filter technique to avoid user to read the same blog post. Having that great, uh, uh, great applications, what are the op operations performed? Surprisingly, there are very less. There are only add and check, but what about the delete operation? In fact, no, there's no delete operation possible in bloom filters. Let us see how and why in a moment. So with that information in our mind, let's go deep into the theory of Bloom filters. So Bloom filter, as I said, is a very efficient data structure. Therefore, it is performs at the bit level. So it's just a zeros and ones. Initially, the Bloom filter is set to zeros. And in this image, if you see, we have A1 that to be stored or that to be added to the set. So in Bloom filters, the majority of the core crux of the operation is a hash function. Let's say we are storing the URLs. URL is a big string. So to compress down and get the index value where set that particular bit, we are using hash table to find the indexes in the bit array. So here a1 hash value is found by hash function one and hash function two and hash function three. So there are three hash function used to determine three different values. So thereby there is a more efficiency and less probability of error. So in for A1, the hash value is given as at index zero, index two and index four, five, six, index six. So in the similar way, the same hash functions are used for new keys A and B as well. If you see, there is only so much that can be set in the bit array, right? So that is the reason we do, we do not have any delete operation. If we delete any key, there's a chance that we are deleting the same bit or same values or same indexes that are representing the other key as well. So theoretically, it is not possible or it leads to errors if we have delete operation. So that is why delete is not possible. So, but what are the hash functions which we can use? There are specific hash functions only we can use for this. First of all, they have to be fast and also independent hash functions. Popular hash functions for this are FNV, CRC, Murmur, and Go language is one of the best for this scenario because out of the box, Go gives us these hash functions like FN. So we need not to go and implement for ourselves. In this particular blog post, which is very intuitive as well as informative, I'll link this uh, URL in the description below for, for you to play around. So here's an example or working uh, example here. So let's say we are having a string YouTube added so fnv has given index 0 and murmur has given index 6 so we are setting those bits to 1 and let's say we are 
we are adding another and we are getting another values so if you see the amount of bits here are 14 or 15 right so this is the size or this is the size of the bit set there is some calculation based on the probability or like amount of probability you are okay with the false positives as well as the number of hash functions you need so here you as you see they are using only two hash functions but in this example we are using three hash functions right how it is possible so before we actually go into that let's see the calculations behind the values so th this is a uh, basic convention that we use n k and m and p so what are these calculations what are these letters and what are these calculations n is the number of items in the filters this is generally a assumption that we make and p is the probability of false positives and m is the number of bits in the filter and k is the number of hash functions so if you give any two values or if you know any two values other two values are calculated for you generally we use n and p to calculate m and k and accordingly we can write our applications we'll be doing the same thing for our code as well so in this example they are saying we will be having around 4000 of items in our set so they are expecting to have 4000 of items and the probability is 1 in uh, 10 lakhs right uh, around 10 lakhs so with that probability rate as you can see number of hash functions required are 23 and memory is fine so uh, as it is the bit array is very space efficient so it's just 16 KB that is perfectly fine but the number of hash functions that it that are to be used are 23 so how can we overcome this problem so there is an awesome mathematical proof and also a theory uh, theoretical paper that is that has been published that says that we can create arbitrary number of hash values from just two hash functions with with the seed value so we'll be we're gonna use the same technique that has been given in the paper and calculate any number of hash values uh, based on that a particular technique using just two hash functions we can use fnv and murmur or crc any hash functions based on our choice now let's code so as we have understood the theory of bloom filters let us go into the go code and see how bloom filters is implemented so first we have to import uh, we have to declare package main and import these following packages fmt for io and hash for our hash functions we are choosing crc as well as fnv and we need math for calculating the other three properties of the bloom filters uh, that we have seen and also we are going to use the package go data structures uh, in that we are going to use bit array so bit array provides us the abstraction over doing all the complex complex bit manipulations so this is a, a bf bloom filter a structure that we are declaring we will be having set and bit array so we are aliasing the package bit array using the bit array and uh, we are going to namespace it like this and k is the number of hash functions n is the number of items m and p so here is a, a new bloom filter method which are which is exposed uh, for us to create a new bloom filters by a given size and the false positive probability so here is the calculations that we are using m for calculating m and calculating k so here is the following uh, calculations to get the appropriate values of the bloom filters so using the same calculations we gonna get m and k respectively and we are assigning and creating a new bloom filter structure and uh, these are the operations that are performed by the bloom filters which we are declaring in an interface 
so the operands here are add check as well as details so details is just a simple method printf method that gives us all the details of the bloom filters m n k and p now first let's check into add so here is the add method add method is nothing but a method that takes in the item which is of type string and finds out the hash function or hash indexes and puts it into the set so here is uh, we are extracting all the values from the bloom filter structure and we are looping over the k or is the number of hash functions as we know hash functions can be any number based on the size of the your items or size of your bloom filter itself that is m and k so we gonna find different hash values uh, that I have mentioned earlier by using uh, the technique here. So this get index is a private method that we gonna use uh, to get the hash index. So fnv is the first hash function that you gonna use and and crc32 is the second hash function that we are gonna use. So here is a uh, small technique that we are using to calculate any number of hash values based on just two hash functions. So it's just hash value of 1 plus hash value of 2 into the seed value that is i. So i here I am just sending in the index of the for loop itself. And we are moduling by the size of the bloom filter therefore not exceeding the size. So passing these values every time we're gonna get one digest or nothing but the index so this index we're gonna append to the digests so these digests is just for debugging purposes i have used but the main method is this set set bit of digest so setting that bit from 0 to 1 initially the all the values or all the bits are 0 so this is the add method so we're gonna first get all the hash values by iterating over the k and finding the hash indexes setting that particular index or a digest to one now since we are done with the add we have we have to check whether the particular added item is present or not and we know that a bloom filter is a probabilistic data structure which has some rate of false positive so in a similar way here as well we are extracting the information from the bloom filter and we add and check are very similar because we have to do the same operation to find out whether the element is present in the set or not so as you can see the signature here everything seems to be very similar so we are going to get the index digest value and this get bit from the bit array we are going to use to see if the particular bit is set on that index or not if it is it returns two parameters or two arguments that is value at the position and the error if the if it is exceeding the size so if it is not null we are just printing it out it's just for uh, uh, safety purpose but the main logic is here so if the value at the position is false if once it is false we can certainly say that it is not present in the bloom filter so we are returning it false and breaking out of the loop but if it is present in the loop we gonna we gonna get true always and we we are gonna return true at the end of the loop so this check value is pretty similar to the add it just it reads through the hash values get the indexes get the bit at the position if it finds the bit to be zero then certainly it is not present or if it is if all the hash value indexes are one or true then that particular item might be there or might present in the bloom filter okay so these are the methods and the methods of the interfaces of the bloom filter now here is the main method so first we are going to create the bloom filter likewise and we are saying n equal to 200 and false positive is 0 0.001 these are fairly uh, 
lesion numbers we can be more aggressive or you can you can experiment on it more so first we are going to print the details and uh, let's say we are first adding these four fraud strings as we have uh, seen earlier google chrome uses bloom filter to find out malicious or to store the malicious urls and and avoid user from going to that url by checking if it is present in the set or not so similarly we are going to mimic the same thing and uh, here we are adding these four urls to the set and we are next finding out whether particular url is malicious or not so here first we are using the same url that is present in the set and second we are using google.com which certainly is not there in the set okay i hope you have understood the workings of the bloom filters we are we have abstracted out the complexity of the bit array or bit manipulations as well as we have abstracted out the hash functions itself so we are using the inbuilt functions crc32 or fnb there are many more hash functions or hash variations of this function available in the go but uh, we, are, we are using these two there is nothing wrong in it so now let's run this code so my name uh, so my file name is bf underscore the two dot go so let me just do go run and bf underscore two dot go and if you run it so first you are getting the details and uh, so certainly this set is working okay first is setting true and second is setting false okay i have missed one uh, detail to give you that from where we have got these bit array so this is a third party package or it's a package like npm you can you have package management in go as well so this is this is a third party uh, uh, package that we are using here so everything in, in unlike in uh, npm or unlike in node all the packages are stored in one workspace in go uh, so we we have to refer whole package uh, this is the syntax to get the package dash u and this is the this is this is the whole string that you need to give to download the code or uh, download the package onto your local and use it further okay i hope uh, you have understood something about bloom filters i hope you have learned learn something about go this is just the basics of go we have not gone into deeper into into go but this helps you to get started with go as well as well as most importantly bloom filter i hope you like this video if you liked share this video and uh, i'll see you in next one